Unit 8A, Lesson H. This is Day 3 of graphing. Earlier we learned about graphing using a table and using X and Y intercepts. Today you're going to learn uh, the slope-intercept form, which is by far the fastest and most efficient way of doing this. Uh, your objectives for today, the things you want to be able to say you can do, is to be able to graph a linear equation on a coordinate plane and to be able to graph those special cases, those horizontal and vertical lines. All right. Uh, a couple things before we get started. Something you've heard from us before, slope-intercept form, is when you have y by itself. So it's y equals mx plus b. All right. Uh, yesterday you saw a lot of problems that were in standard form where x and y were on the same side. Typically when x and y are on the same side, you would use x and y intercepts. When y is by itself, you're going to use the method I'm going to show you right now. Uh, when you look at slope-intercept form, it's important to realize that the m stands for slope. That's the number in front of the variable. And the b is your y-intercept. Okay? So one of the things we're going to do, it's a simple process. All right? We're going to go ahead and write out our m and b. And then from there, we're going to begin at b and then do the slope. All right? So... Looking at this problem, example one, you'll notice that I have a slope that is 2 and a y-intercept that is positive 1. I'm going to go ahead and write that out. m equals 2 over 1, and the b is a point zero, 0,1. All right, now I'm going to switch over because it's hard with the program I have to draw straight lines. You guys are going to go ahead and graph right on here, but what's going to happen is, like I said, I'm going to switch to a new program. My y-intercept was at 0, 1, right there. Okay, and if you remember, my slope was 2 over 1. So from here, I'm going to go up 2 over 1, place a dot. You'll notice that my graph actually is in already. All right, you'll have to put your line in on your own. All right, one of the good things about slope is, is it's a constant rate. So what that means is if I go from this point and I go again up 2 over 1, you'll notice I'm still on the same line. All right. And if I go back to the original point and do the opposite of up 2 over 1, and I go down 2 backwards 1, you'll notice I put another point on the same line. And again, I could do that again, down 2 to the left 1, and there's a whole bunch of points on that one line. All right? You only need two points to make a line, but it's usually a good idea to have at least three. Or again, the more you put, the more accurate you're going to be. All right, so let's move on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and plot the points at least. All right, so we started at 1, and then from there, we went up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And like I said, it's almost impossible for me to draw a straight line. That's why I'm using a computer program. All right, let's move on. Example B. All right, when we take a look at example B, you're going to notice that it looks like things are missing. All right, but it's important to realize that the slope is the number in front of x, and the y-intercept is what's after x. All right, in this particular case, it looks like nothing, but we know that when there's a nothing in front of x, there's always a 1, so that's going to be negative 1 over 1. My y-intercept is not there, so it's nothing, also known as 0. So on your graph, that's going to be 0, 0, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1. So what we want to do when we do slope is if, the t if it's positive, we're going up. If it's negative, we're going down. And we should always move to the right, all right, as we do this. All right, so again, I'm going to flip over so that you can actually see the line as I do it. Put too many extra points on that one. All right, so we're starting at 0, 0. We're going down 1, over 1. Down 1, over 1. Down 1, over 1. And again, just put as many points as you need to make a straight line. The more points you put, the straighter your line is going to be. All right? So you got some U-try problems on there that you'll do in class tomorrow. Let's move on to the next type of problem. All right? Example 2, there's only one of them here. All right? And that is just dealing with a fraction to make sure we're good there. Nothing changes in terms of what we see. That's your slope. I should probably highlight the whole thing. 
and that's your y-intercept. So when I go to write this down, my m is one-third, and my y-intercept is zero, negative one. So that means I'm going to start at negative one, zero, negative one, and I'm going to go from there, up one, to the right three, up one, right three, up one, to the right three. So again, if I want to put more points on, the opposite of going up one, right three, will be down one, left three. Down one, left three. All right, so again, let me go ahead and show you what the line's going to look like instead of just a bunch of dots. Okay, we have a y-intercept of zero, negative one. And I'm going up one over one, two, three, place my dot. What I like about this program is when you look at it, you'll notice that this line goes all the way through. It doesn't stop. Okay, so when you're drawing your lines, remember, you don't just stop at the points. So if I go back to that first one that I kind of really made an ugly line on right here, is I made that line as long as I could, and I put arrows on both ends. I did not stop at the point here and the point here. All right, like, for example, if I go to this one, I'm not just doing this and there's my line. All right, I want a line that's continuous and goes through the graph. All right, make it make the line as long as possible. All right, so uh, again, there's a U try problem for you. Let's move on to the last type of problem, and those are the special cases. Okay, the special cases, all right, are tricky sometimes. Uh, when you look at the first example, it's not labeled, this is example A. All right, um, this does have y by itself. So we could go ahead and say, well, x is missing. That means slope is 0, or 0 over 1. And the y-intercept is 0, comma, 0 0.5. And we could graph from there. Here's 0, 0 0.5. And then this means go up 0, go right 1. So up 0 means don't go up. And then to the right 1. To the right 1, to the right 1, and so on. All right, so you get a horizontal line like that. Hey, that's a pretty straight line. I'm proud of myself. All right, if I go if I go here, I have my half, and then again it's just gonna look like that. Actually I did better freehand than the computer program. I'm gonna go back here. There no, oh, it keeps jumping on me. Alright, sorry. I'll try it one more time. There it is. Alright. So you're sitting at a half there uh, and not moving over. Another way of doing this, and one that I've seen through the years that kids like more, when you're missing a variable, okay, that means it doesn't matter what you pick for it. And what I would tell you to do is list three points. All right. Again, you only need really need two, but list in three helps you in case you make a mistake. Where the y value is going to be 0 0.5 in all three cases. And the x value, you get to make up, so might as well do something easy like 1, 0, 1, 2. So here's your 0 and 0 0.5, here's your over 1 and up 0.5, here's your over 2 and up 0.5. Now you have three dots, you can connect them and make your line. Now, you may think, well, I'd rather do slope-intercept form graphing than do the three points. That's fine. However, when you get to this one, that's not going to help you because this is x equals. All right, so this is not slope intercept form. So now I'm definitely going to tell you use 6, 0, negative 6, 1, and negative 6, 2. You know? All right, and so we would do negative 6, 0, negative 6, 1, negative 6, 2, and you're going to see a very ugly vertical line. So let me give you a straight one just so that we're all uh, looking at a nice straight line. Negative 6 here, 2, go here. All right, all those points are on that vertical line. Okay. Uh, I'm going to add two quick things here. We call this a horizontal line. It has zero slope. We call this a vertical, albeit an incredibly not straight and ugly vertical line. All right, and it has undefined slope. All 
All right. Uh, you have some you try problems for you to do it in class, and that is it. Just want to point out that if you don't have these things in red, we're not giving you credit for your homework because you weren't listening and following all the way through. So please do that, and we'll see you in class tomorrow.